Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today we're jumping back in time a little bit and we're gonna do some Perfect Pearls techniques. So I'm bringing in some products from my new release and I'm gonna share several different ways to apply the Perfect Pearls to your card making projects. Everything I use will be linked down below and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. I know many of you guys have Perfect Pearls. If you don't, I'll be sure to link them down below, but there are tons of different colors of them. I've got them sorted here into warm tones, cool tones, and also some of the more neutral colors as well. And these pearl powders come in little pots like this and you apply them onto your project with a brush. A little bit goes a long way with these. And what makes them special is that there's a built-in binder. So all you need to do to set them is spray them with water. All right, let's jump into the techniques. All right, so I'm starting off with black cardstock because they really pop off of black. And I'm going to do the stamping inside my Misty to make sure it's perfect. We're gonna start off using the framed floral stamp set. And what I love about this set is there's lots of solid areas in these florals, which is going to be great for using along with Perfect Pearls. So I'm gonna use this image up here. We'll carefully peel it off of our stamp sheet and then line it up onto our project exactly where we want it to stamp. And then we'll pick it up with the Misty door. And for the stamping, you wanna use a clear sticky ink. So I'm gonna use Versamark, but you could also use Perfect Medium, which was sort of designed to work along with the Perfect Pearls. So I'm going to ink this up and then we can stamp it right down onto our black card stack. Then we get some good pressure to make sure that everything transfers. And what's great about using the Misty is I can always go back in and re-ink it just to make sure that it's perfectly inked up. So I'm gonna do that and give it some good pressure to once again, make sure that it transfers. Perfect. All right, now whenever I'm working with Perfect Pearls, I always like to have a sheet of cardstock down to protect my work surface. And then I'm gonna bring in some colors I wanna use for the flower. So I'm gonna be using Sunflower Sparkle and Pink Gumball for the florals. I'm gonna use a little detail brush. This comes along in lots of the sets of Perfect Pearls. We can dip it in there. And like I said, a little bit goes a long way. And I'll just start applying this to the sort of centers of those flowers. And what I love about this detail brush and only applying a tiny bit of powder at one time is we can really see where it's going and make sure that we concentrate the powder in certain areas like this, which is really fun. And then I'll just wipe off the brush a little bit and then go into the pink gumball color and add it to the flowers as well to add a little bit of shading and dimension to them. Really super simple. And like I was saying, a really little bit of this powder goes a long way. You don't want too much, just a little bit and spread it out amongst the flower. And we'll cover the little blooms in the set as well. And if you get a little bit onto the part where you want the green, don't worry. All right, now I'm just going to quickly flip this over and tap off some of the excess so we can get rid of some of that powder on the surface. And then we'll move into the green colors that we're using. I'm going to use Festival Green, which is a darker green, Green Patina, which is a little bit lighter. And we'll also throw in a little bit of this mint color too. I like to mix a couple shades to really give it lots of dimension. So I'll start off in Green Patina and start applying this color down. And since we've already covered the flowers, they're pretty safe here. So we can just go in and apply green over top of the rest of the surface. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit here and there with this first color. It's almost magical just the way that it sticks to some of those areas and really starts to reveal this design just beautifully. All right, so once we got some of that color laid down, we'll go into the next color. Here I'm using that mint color and we'll start applying it down to some of the leftover areas. And then last but not least, we'll go in with a little bit of this forever green color and just finish it off by filling in some of the last areas. And once it starts coming together like this, you can really see why it's so fun to have several different shades of one color. Like I said, it just adds tons of depth to the image. All right, again, I'll tap off some of the excess powder and then I'll go in with my second brush. They have these little bit larger brushes. You can see mine is already a little bit worn and kind of damaged. And that's because I like to take this brush and start pouncing it over top of the surface. You pounce it pretty hard into the surface just to kind of push those powders into that ink and make sure that everything is going to stay into place. This I feel like is a pretty integral step of the process. So just make sure you go over top of the whole image and start pressing those powders in. All right, once that's done, you're gonna see the design a little bit more, but there's still lots of excess powder. And that's where this surface sweep from Nuvo comes really in handy. So you just want a nice large brush like this, and then all you need to do is just easily sweep off the powder from the surface, and it's going to remove those really nicely and just reveal your black card stack again. So check out that difference there. This is a really great brush to have in your collection to sweep off things like this or glitter off of your projects and it really cleans them up nicely because the bristles are quite stiff. 
And once that's done, you can see the shine really comes out and that black cardstock is nice and clean because of that surface sweep brush. It really cleans it up nicely. To set this into place, you could go in with a fixative spray, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of water to set them in place. So all you need to do is go in and spray the surface. I'm gonna spray it about three to four times with a nice light mist just to get that nice and set in place. And then because I'm quite impatient, I'm just gonna go in and heat set this to dry the surface and bring it back to normal. Once it's all dry, here's how it should look. And the nice part about this is once it's set into place, it doesn't come off on your fingers nearly as much, which is a really nice. Now I wanna add this to a different color card base. So I'm going to go in and cut this right out. It's really easy to do since it's just a simple rectangle. So go in with our Fiskars spring assist scissors and fussy cut it out. And I'm leaving a little bit of a black border so that it has a little bit of contrast against whatever colored background that we put it against. Now I want a soft tone on tone background, so I'm going in using the Folk Art Florals background stamp, a little bit of woof ink for a tone on tone look, and then this really nice light warmish gray color, which I think is gonna look great here for a nice neutral look. So I'm just gonna go in and ink up this background stamp. And then we can stamp this down right in the center and then I'll use a little bit of a pressure tool to make sure that this all evenly transfers and that we get a great coverage with our background stamp. And once that's done, there we have our beautifully stamped background. I love this tone on tone look because it gives us detail, but it doesn't take away from the rest of the card. All right, then if you guys know me, you know I love to add dimension to these type of backgrounds. So I'm gonna go in using a little bit of that same color woof ink, and I'm just going to lightly blend it around the edge of this background. This is just going to draw your eye to the center because it's going to be lighter in the center and add a little bit of depth to the card. I really think it's little details like this that just kind of pull a whole card together. So if you think your background is missing something, maybe try adding a little bit of ink around the edges and darken it up to give it some dimension. Then I'll add a little bit of tape runner all the way around. And then I'll add this to my top folding card. I always start in the top corner, line it up with that edge, and then it should follow all the way down on your card. And then I'll center that right on the card and place it down on some foam tape to pop it off. Now for this sentiment, I always like to use the clear acetate sheet to test out which one that works best. And I think I like the sentiment that just says, I love you. It won't cover up too much and it can go over top of some of these leaves. All right, then I'll stamp that down using a little bit of VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. Going to stamp it down. And here I'm stamping it onto that same color off-white cardstock so that we can continue with that theme and not have something too bright. And then I'll use some clear embossing powder to set that black ink into place. And I'll heat set that until it's clear and shiny. All right, then I'll just carefully trim around that sentiment, leaving a little bit of a border all the way around. Then I'll add that sentiment down onto the card and make it hang off the edge a little bit to add a little bit of depth. And there's a look at the finished card. I love that we used those framed florals, which has lots of solid area to apply the perfect pearls. It turned out just stunning on there. I love all the shine. And then that really nice, simple background using the folk art florals ties everything together just beautifully. For this next card, I'm gonna use the inked bloom stamp set, which has a similar style with all of these really nice solid florals, which again, is gonna be great for applying perfect pearls. And I wanna use this large stem with all these solid flowers. All right, so for this first image, I'm just gonna do some shaded inking. So I'm starting off by using a little bit of Shooting Star, which is my bright yellow color. And I'm going to ink up the whole floral part of the image. Then we can easily flip that over and stamp it down onto our surface. Perfect. And the great part about working in the misty is if we want to stamp it again, we totally can to make the image just a little bit darker. Next, I'm gonna go in using a detail blending tool, which is this little piece of foam on one end. And I'm going to go in using a bit of prom queen and just add some shading down to this image. So for this, all I need to do is go in and tap this on the center of the florals, just to give a little bit of depth, dimension, and extra color to these images. Then we can flip this over and stamp it down. And you can see just how much dimension that adds. This is why I love stamping it in the misty, so we can add different colors like that. I'll do it one more time right in the center just to make the colors a little bit darker and really stand out on our card project. 
And then lastly, we'll add a little bit of green down to the stem. So here I'm gonna use a little bit of Viper and we'll stamp it right down, which is a great olive green color. Now you can also get a set of dies to cut out all of the images and some sentiments from this set, which is really nice. So all I need to do is place this over top of the image, making sure it's nice and centered, and then I'll apply some mint tape to hold it in place. We'll run it through our die cutting machine. All right, then I'll pop that out and you can see just how simply that cut out with a really nice border. All right, now I wanna place the image about here on my card and I wanna create a little background with some of these flowers in it too. So I'll line that up in my Misty, pick it up, and then again, I'm gonna stamp it down using some clear sticky ink because we're gonna apply Perfect Pearls onto this. So just ink my image up and stamp it right down onto the card. And then I'll do the same thing, scooting the image over a little bit and then down a little bit. And again, I'm going to stamp it down using some Versamark to create a little background of these florals. For this, instead of using any color, I'm going to use the Perfect Pearl, Perfect Pearl Powder, which is this nice pearly white color. And I'm going to take out my fine detail brush again and apply this down onto the surface over top of these florals. And this is going to bring a nice pearl shine to the image and make it stand out really nicely from the background with all of that beautiful and intense shine it has. I love this because although it's shiny, it's still pretty neutral. So it can work with tons of different color palettes and it's just really beautiful on this background. And again, once we've applied that powder down, we can go in with our brush and just really stipple it in there to press all of that powder into the brush mark ink and make sure it's nice and stuck down on the surface. Once we've done that, it's time for our next step, which is sweeping off any of the excess using our surface sweep. And this thing does just such a good job at cleaning off even the darkest colors of cardstock like this navy from all of the excess powder. Then again, I'll lightly mist this down to make sure we set it into place. And then I'll let this dry or heat set it to speed along the process a little bit. And once that's dry, check out all that beautiful shine against the dark navy cardstock. And I love that it didn't lose any of those detailed lines inside of the flowers. You can still see all of that amazing detail. And then I'll apply this down onto a card base, again, starting from the top corner, moving along the edge, and then we'll adhere it right down. I'll place this in the center of those two flower clusters and adhere it down on some foam tape to pop it up and give it some dimension off the card. I'm going back to the coordinated die set for the sentiment. There's dies in here to cut up the words thank you and love you, and today I'm gonna to use the thank you dies. Now I wanna match the navy cardstock and add a little bit of shine to my sentiment. So for this, I'm gonna use a little bit of Midnight Snack Lunar Paste. I'll dip my finger right into here. You could also use a blending tool if you want to, but I find this to be super easy. And I'm just going to spread this along on some stark white cardstock to coat the cardstock and make my own sort of metallic DIY cardstock. And once we got that applied on the surface, I'm going to go in and heat set this. It should only take a couple of minutes though because it's applied so thin and it dries really nice and quickly. And just like that, it's nice and dry and we're ready to die cut out of it, but check out all of the amazing shine once it's dry. All right, so this set has the words and the shadows. I'm going to place the words onto the Midnight Snack Lunar Paste and I'm gonna place the shadows right onto my stark white cardstock because the white is gonna stand out from the navy background. And then I'll run that right through my die cutting machine. Okay, so all the letters are connected. So it's really easy to just go in using a little bit of liquid glue and add it all over the word die. And then we'll center it and add it down onto the shadow. And what I love about these shadows is that it makes it stand out from the background. So if you have a busy background going on, this is going to make your word die stand out. And then I'll do the same thing with the word U and adhere it down. All right, then I'll add this onto the card with some foam tape. And then I'll stagger the U a little bit to the right and adhere that down as well. And here's a closer look at that finished card. I love that in the background we were able to stamp those flowers and use the perfect pearl powder to make them stand out, but not distract with a bunch of color. And then that front and center floral really stands out beautifully. And I also love that sentiment that's nice and shiny and coordinates with the background really well. For this next card, I'm gonna use the Inked Bloom stamp set again. I'm gonna use this Lily's image. And this one has some solid areas, but it also has some more open areas, which are gonna be great for coloring things in. To make sure everything stamps really well again, I'm going to line this up in the Misty, pick it up, and I'm gonna do some white heat embossing. So I'm gonna go in with my antiseptic powder tool to make sure that nothing sticks where we don't want it to. And then I'll use my Versamark clear sticky ink to stamp down this image. So we'll ink it up and 
and then stamp it right down, giving it some good pressure to make sure everything transfers. And then for this, I'm gonna use a little bit of white heat embossing powder, sprinkle it over top, and then tap off any of the excess. I also find lightly blowing on the image helps to get rid of some of the excess powders as well. And then I'll heat set this until it's nice and bright white. All right, now I've brought in my glass mat and I picked out a couple colors I wanna use, and we're gonna create a little palette of these colors. So I'm just gonna grab a little tiny bit. All I did was fold a little piece of paper in half to create a little scoop like this, and then we can apply a little bit of that pearl powder down to create a palette. Next, I'll go into this pink gumball color. All right, I'm gonna go into the purple color next. We'll add a little bit down. And again, a little bit goes a long way with these, but the more you do add, the more shiny it's gonna be with your colors. And then last but not least, we'll add a little bit of green. All right, then I'll add a little bit of water down over top of these powders. Make sure to not add too much water because it really dilutes these out. And then when we mix it in, it creates this really great pearly watercolor. So then all we need to do is go in with that watercolor and start painting it on the surface. And you could do this on black or white cardstock, but on this black cardstock, the shimmer really stands out so beautifully. Next, I'll bring in that pink color. And what I love about the embossing lines as well is those white embossed lines will resist the pearl powder. So instead of just doing regular stamping, I recommend embossing because then the lines will stay really nice and crisp instead of kind of blending into the background. All right, then I'll mix in the purple with the water and I'll add some purple down to this bottom flower. You can see I already added some pink and we can really just blend the two colors together as well. And they blend just beautifully into one another. So don't be afraid to mix these colors to create new pearly colors in between. Then lastly, I'll mix in this green color and we're going to paint in the green to all of these areas with the stems and leaves. All right, then with any of this excess color that's left, we can just take a piece of black cardstock and start dipping it right into the surface here. And it's going to create a nice shimmery pearlescent cardstock, which I really love. So don't forget to kind of dip this in and use any of the excess you have. And once these dry, they just are so beautiful and pearlescent. So here's this background that we created using just the Waste Perfect Pearls, which would be so great for die cutting backgrounds out of. I love the shine. And then here is that beautifully colored floral. You can see all of the amazing shine that we have in there, just mixing in a little bit of water to the perfect pearls. And the cool part about this is again, it doesn't come off on your fingers once it's completely dry like that. All right, then I'll go into the coordinating die set, line up the die that's going to cut this out. Just make sure everything is nice and centered. Then we'll use some mint tape to hold it in place and we'll run it through and make sure it doesn't shift. Then we can pop this out and check out how that looks once it's cut out. It even cuts out the little pieces in between, which is what I love about this die because you wouldn't be able to do that with just scissors. To create a background, I'm gonna use the stained glass window die from one of my latest releases. I love this one and all of the beautiful detail that we have in it. So behind the stained glass window, I want a little blue cardstock panel. So I'm going to cut it out using just the arch die. So we'll run this right through our die cutting machine. And then to cut out the detail layer, I'm going to place both of these dies together, make sure they're nice and centered, and then I'll add some mint tape to hold them down into place. And then I'll run this through the die cutting machine just using some stark white cardstock. All right, so here's how they're going to layer up, just like that. But I want that blue panel underneath to have a little bit more dimension to it. So I'm gonna bring in some breakup blue, which almost matches this color perfectly. And I'm just going to go in with my dome foam blending tool, and I'm gonna add this color starting from the bottom and sort of fading upwards so that it's lighter on the top half and darker on the bottom. Just going to blend this in. And you can see this color is just a little bit richer than the cardstock color. So it's gonna give it some great depth and dimension as we blend it onto our surface. Then we'll use a little bit of liquid glue all over the back to add some adhesive to adhere these pieces together. All right, then all you have to do is line up the edges. They should line up perfectly and then adhere them together. And then I can adhere this floral down on some foam tape to pop it up. And I got it more towards the right side of the window on the card. All right, I really love the sentiments inside of this Ink Bloom stamp set. They're all really great for sympathy cards. And I think I like this one that says, in celebration of a beautiful life. Then I'll stamp this down using some jet black ink. Stamp it down onto my white cardstock. And then I'm going to throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder to set the ink into place. And we'll heat set this until it's clear and shiny. And then to finish this off, I'm gonna go in and fussy cut this sentiment right out, 
leaving a little bit of a white border. But I love to fussy cut sentiments out like this because it gives it a more finished look on your card rather than just leaving it on a regular rectangle of cardstock. And then I'm just going to pop that right on the top of the card on some foam tape and that finishes it off really beautifully. So here's a look at that finished card. I love how beautiful those florals are watercolored in using the perfect pearls. It really makes such a great impact on black cardstock with tons of shine. And then finishing it off with that stained glass window gives it a bunch of detail and really brings this beautiful card to life. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching today's video. I really always appreciate bringing out older products and showing you guys tons of ways to use them. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment down below on which card was your favorite. Also down there is a full supplies list to everything I used in today's video and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Thanks again so much for stopping by and I'll see you guys soon in another card making and crafting video. Have a great day, bye.